Hi everyone, I made this drawing using the grease pencil in Blender and I'd like to show you how you can make a walk cycle out of a drawing like this. For this demonstration I'm going to use the SPA version of Blender, which is a version that we developed during the pre-production of the movie Ember. Uh, the goal of this version was to improve the 2D animation workflow and make it faster. And so we created this panel here, which gathers some of the tools that are already there in all the modern versions of Blender, plus some new tools that you can only find here. Now, this version is available for free, and you can download it uh, from the link down into the description. So I strongly encourage you to try it and have fun. So now that we have this pose here, what do we do with it? I'm going to go by the manual this time. I'm going to use a very safe and tested method to create a walk cycle. So this pose here is the contact pose and it's called contact because the heel is touching ground here. This leg is very straight and the weight of the body hasn't been taken by this leg. It's going, that's going to happen in the next pose. So we have this leg in the contact pose that is very straight and in the next pose, which is the down pose, this leg bends down to catch the weight of the character. So imagine the same principle as a bouncing ball that is feeling the ground already, even though the rest of the ball hasn't yet. This part of the ball doesn't know about the ground, just this tip does. And then in the following key, you draw the ball completely squashed in the same spot and that shows the contrast in how the shape of the ball changes squashing down on the ground. Other important information that the contact pose gives to us is the width of the step. This is the drawing that shows us how big the stride is. And also, because this is usually the first drawing we do, we are deciding a lot about the overall attitude of the body of the character. So in this case I went for this sort of proud stance which is going to stay during the whole walk and one factor that you have to keep into account is the angle of the body. So the more the body is in a vertical kind of stance the less intentional the walk is going to look. Whereas if the character is leaning forward this is going to tell us that the character really knows where he is going and how urgent it is. So, angle equals intention. Okay, now that I have this key, I need to find the opposite relative contact position. So, I'm going to turn on the onion skin and reverse everything that I see in this drawing here. Just about everything. So, if I can see a bit of the inside of the skirt here, I'm not going to be able to see that in the opposite drawing. If the belt line is oriented this way in this drawing, I'm going to do this for the next key. This foot is going to become the closed foot, so I'm going to move it here on the lower line. Same goes for this. And also, if I see a bit of chest here, I'm going to see a bit of back in the next key and this is the far shoulder in the previous drawing is going to become the close shoulder and so on. You just reverse about everything. If this is the line of the wrist it's going to become like this. We can see the inside of the hand now. So you basically make a perfectly reversed version of uh, your previous drawing. So once we have done the reverse key, we have to understand where to place it. And in order to do that, I'm using this foot from the previous drawing as a reference. So if you notice this tip here, at some point it's going to go down on the floor and it's going to become this tip here. Same goes for the heel, at some point it's going to go up and become this heel. Basically this is the same foot. So I'm going to move this drawing more or less here and that is the right position. So what about the timing now? What's going to be the frame number for this drawing? 
in order to decide what's going to be the frame number, we have to stopwatch what we imagine is going to be the pace for this walk. So if I had something like this in mind, and stopwatch this sound, uh, I come up with more or less half a second for each step. So half a second is going to separate these two drawings something like this, which translated into frame numbers if one second is 25 frames. We are at about 13 frames here, which is halfway. So this frame is going to be called 13. So this is the time we have between the drawings to place the remaining three keys. The remaining three keys are the down position here, which marks how low we go with the body and this leg is bent to catch the weight. Then we have the passing position which is slightly higher than the contacts and it tells us a lot about the character because we have this leg that is supporting the weight is completely busy with physics while the other leg is now halfway the work of going from here to here and the arms are in the center of, of their swinging process so the silhouette of the character is very small and because the character is so free to move because this leg is doing the whole work of supporting the weight we can show a lot about the physical attitude of the character and his personality so if we want to do something crazy with the other leg this is the chance we have. The up position instead is the highest point and the body is pushing up. So this leg is usually with a raised heel here and the other leg is way into the process of catching up. So as you can imagine, this is a very crucial time for our walk because we already took a lot of decisions with the contact pose in terms of uh, length of the stride and the overall attitude of the character. And now we have three keys remaining to define the entire walk. So basically the whole walk is decided on this side. What happens on the other side is just going to be a copy of whatever we do here uh, the same way as we mirrored key 1 into key 13 we will have to do to the down pass and up pose on the other side so now it is really time to understand what we want what I want from this character in this walk is that um, he looks a little bit bold and so I want him to kind of throw his arm from his elbow so his help is gonna go out this way here dragging the rest of the arm and his head would be leaning to one side suggesting that he's really willing to take his space this way here this would be the passing position and in the up he would be leaning even more Kind of like this. So the next drawing in the order is going to be the passing position because it's the easiest to find as it's halfway between the contact positions. And there's my passing position. As you can see I drew the elbow a little bit out and I started leaning the head a bit to the side this leg is vertical, supporting the weight, and the other arm is swinging backwards. We almost don't see it. The free leg is halfway its work towards the next contact, and so we have our passing position. I'm going to assign this to frame number 7, 
because it's halfway in time for now. Maybe it's not really visible here, but what I did was to give a bit of tilt to this head, slight, just a slight tilt, and also if you check this angle here, this head is slightly pointing a little bit forward. And this is because between the down position, which is going to call the head a little bit this way, so if this is the nose, the nose is going to go up, and it's going to go back down on the passing position, then adjusting again on the up. So when you draw these keys, you have to keep into account the direction where the body is coming from and what's the, the energy, okay? Even the hair, for example, is being dragged because on the passing position, the direction is up. We are still going to reach the up position, so the body is going this way and therefore the hair is being pulled. So in the end, these are the four keys, down, pass, and up, and then contact again. And as you see, I numbered them four, seven, and ten. And here is how they look like. When you animate these drawings, I suggest you stay loose and flip a lot so you can feel the motion. It's really important for an animation to be successful that you don't focus much on how beautiful the drawings are as much as how they feel in motion. So this is the right side of my walk and it's going to determine the rest of the whole process. Okay, now to prepare the ground for the rest of the walk, I need to find the next contact. After 1, 13, I will have to create 25. So I'm going to make a new keyframe. And 25 is going to be the copy of 1. So I'm going to copy this drawing here and paste it on the same spot and call it 25. So in order to move this drawing in the right spot and space, I'm going to change the frame type on 1 and 13. I'm going to also call this one an extreme because it is. And I'm going to use the onion skin but filtering only through the extremes. So now I can see 1 and 13 and I will be able to place 25, always using that foot as a reference, in the right place. Now I know where to place the new down, the new pass and the new up, which will be reversed from the old down, pass and up. And I can position them correctly, always using this foot as a reference. This foot is going to be on the ground the whole time, and so it's an easy checkpoint for reference. So let's start by reversing the passing position, this one here, which is going to be between the two contact poses. So I'm going to draw a scribble here, which is roughly where the new passing pose is going to be. And I want to use the shift and trace to trace over this key here. So I'm going to mark this key is an extreme as well as the two contact poses. So now if I turn on the onion skin and I filter through extreme, I'm going to see this drawing which is the one that I need to reverse. And I can even now through the shift and trace take it and bring it where I need. I'm going to delete this scribble here and start reversing this drawing here. And I will repeat the process for the down and the up. After reversing all the keys on the other side, the keys are complete. And so we have 
the whole walk planned out and we are ready for the in-betweens. Right now with this timing we would have two in-betweens available between each key if we want to in-between these on ones. And the fact that we have two in-betweens available means that we would have theoretically two in-between in thirds, which is a bit uncomfortable. But before we get there, I have an idea. I want to slightly change the timing of this walk and I want to give it a little bit more bounce. I'm not going to touch the drawings. I'm only going to change the timing. So what I want to do is these are all my drawings right now. See this bounce here. I want the character to spend less time going down and more time in this section here up in the air. So I'm going to slightly move these keys in timing and make more room around this area. So this area will have more in-betweens and this area here will have less. So I'm going to take the down and the pass and I'm going to move them earlier. So now we have the four that becomes three and seven becomes six. And now we will have one, two, three in-betweens before the up. And also I want to push these ones later so that after the up we have one, two, three in-betweens before the contact. And then same thing in the other section. I will have to take these two, move them earlier. Exactly what I did here in this section here. I'm going to repeat it on the other side. So same exact thing. And I'm going to end up by lengthening this animation two frames. So this is not going to be 25 anymore, it's going to be 27. It doesn't change much, it makes the animation slightly longer and it's going to be more, uh, it's going to have more accent on the down, like this. And of course, uh, all the keys that have been affected by this change will have to be renumbered. And so this is the new plan. I have one in between between contact and down, two in betweens between down and pass, three in betweens before the up, three in betweens after the up, and again one in between between contact and down, and so on. I re will repeat the scheme on the other side. Charting in this case is easy because I have. Uh, one in between here, which is going to be halfway. This part here is going to be done on thirds. And this part here can be done either linearly or in deceleration if you want. This one here I made it in acceleration to make sure that the character kind of falls slowly into the contact and then one in between halfway here before the down and you repeat it again. One quick note about in-betweening in thirds. In-betweening in thirds means that if you have a drawing here and a drawing here and this is the space you have to fill, you have to draw instead of halfway you have one drawing here and one here. Uh, the tricky one is the first one because it's not going to be halfway, of course, it's going to be at one third of the distance. But once you've figured that out, the second in between is easier because you can draw it halfway between this in between and the key. So it's difficult just for the first in between. This is how I in between on thirds between three and six, for example. So I create a new keyframe. And I'm going to help myself by uh, drawing a little bit of the skull on this drawing here. All right, so I can see both circles. And I'm going to place my current drawing at about one third of the spacing. 
okay not halfway but before the halfway and now I'm going to activate the shift and trace and I'm going to pick the green drawing which is the previous one and the blue drawing which is the next one and I'm gonna put them one on top of the other so I can compare the two drawings better and I'm gonna go very close delete my scribble which had the only purpose of helping me in aligning these two drawings and I'm gonna draw closer to the green drawing here because this remember this is in between and on thirds so I have to stay closer to the green drawing and this is tricky I know but the next in between is gonna be easier as I said try to be accurate and draw at one third between the green line and the blue line and so on until all the in-betweens have been done and you have all the keys and in-betweens together and you should get something like this so all is left now is extending the animation so that it looks like the character is entering screen from left and exiting the screen from right and we can also reuse these drawings to create a loop on the spot I'm going to skip this process now and show you the outcome directly so I hope this was informative and fun and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments section below thanks for watching and see you the next time